in this lecture, we're going to derive Poisson's equations, which will basically extend the equation for potential temperature, which was for adiabatic processes. The potential temperature allowed you to easily calculate the temperature or the pressure of an air parcel as it was moved adiabatically in the atmosphere. Poisson's equations will allow you to do the same, uh, except for you will be able to calculate the change in the pressure and the volume for adiabatic motions or the uh, volume and the temperature. Uh, so it's an extension of the uh, potential temperature equation derivation. We're going to start off, of course, with the first law of thermodynamics in the uh, intensive form, excuse me, the extensive form. Uh, and so we've got dq is equal to c sub dt plus pdv, and we're going to assume an adiabatic process, just like we did for potential temperature, and we're going to divide both sides by t. So dq goes to zero, and we're left with c sub v times the derivative of the natural log of t, which is dt over t, plus r star times uh, the derivative of the natural log of v. So where did this come from? It came from substituting in from the ideal gas law into this equation over here. And this is what we're going to have to be our equation to derive Poisson's equations from, that includes both temperature and volume. So if we look at temperature and pressure, then we start off with a similar thing. We start off with this form of the equation. And uh, once again, set dq equal to zero, divide both sides by t and you'll end up with zero is equal to c sub p d log t minus r star over d log p. And this is, of course, for one uh, mole because I've uh, basically taken one into account in this case. Um, the next little thing is a nice little math trick, uh, which is basically taking the derivative of the ideal gas law. The derivative of PV is equal to VdP plus PdV. And the derivative of this side, if we hold our uh, mass of our air parcel constant, is n r star times dt. You divide both sides by n r star t, and you'll end up with this nice little equation, which is dt over t is equal to dp over p plus dv over v. And in, di and, uh, in differential form, uh, the derivative of the natural log of t is equal to the derivative of the natural log of p plus the derivative of the natural log of v. And, of course, we can take that d log t and input it into this equation, which is our t and p equation, uh, which is what we've done up here. And you have c sub p times the derivative of the natural log of p plus c sub p times the derivative of the natural log of v minus r sub star d log p. Uh, and then you can combine terms cp minus r star uh, times d log p plus c sub p d log v. Uh, but you might recall that uh, c, sub v, c sub p minus r star is equal to c sub v. And so we can substitute in here. And we end up with 0 is equal to c sub v d log p plus c sub p d log v. And this is going to be our pressure and volume equation. We have three equations that will allow us to get three Poisson's equations for the relationship between these variables for adiabatic processes. For this equation, we'll get the temperature volume relationship for adiabatic processes. For this one, we'll get the temperature and pressure uh, relationship for adiabatic processes. Recall that the temperature pressure relationship is what we use to get the potential temperature. And up here, we have the pressure and volume relationship for adiabatic processes. And we have three sets of derivations for these, uh, starting off with the t and v equation. <clears throat> Zero is equal to c sub v d log t plus r star d log v. We want to integrate uh, this equation. The integration of zero is a constant, is equal to c sub v log t plus r sub star log v. Um, if you think back to your trig identities, um, you can move the uh, precursor here in front of the natural logarithm to the exponent on both of those. And then recall that the natural log of A plus the natural log of B is equal to the natural log of A times B. Um, so you end up with a constant is equal to the natural log of this quantity. 
And of course, you can take the exponent of both sides because the exponent of a constant is still a constant um, is equal to t raised to the c to the power times r to the r star power. And if we introduce these uh, these terms here, uh, where this uh, eta is equal to c sub p over c sub v, you can algebraically simplify this equation for t and v into temperature times volume to the eta minus one power is equal to a constant. And that is the first of the Poisson equations describing the relationship between temperature and volume for an adiabatic process, where eta is c sub p over c sub v. If we use the t and p equation and do the exact same thing, um, you'll end up with the equation that a temperature to the c sub p power times pressure to the minus r star is equal to a constant. And if you do some algebraic manipulations, you can end up with a TP relationship where temperature times pressure to the minus chi, where chi is R star over C sub P is equal to a constant. And if you look closely, this very, is very similar, of course, to the potential temperature equation um, where we had R sub D over C sub P D. And the last of those equations is the P and V equation, which we're using here. We integrate uh, to get C sub V log P plus C sub P log V. Log, uh, do the same manipulations with the exponents, and the log of A plus the log of B is equal to the log of A times log of B. Take the exponent of both sides, and you'll end up with uh, this form of the equation after a little bit of algebraic manipulation. You'll get pressure times volume to the eta power is equal to a constant. But you might recall that we started with the extensive form of the equation, which meant that this is dependent upon the amount of mass that we have, and I assumed one mole on all of these. And so in order to avoid that assumption, we would like to transform these equations into the intensive form. And so to do that, we're going to use a little bit of statistical mechanics. Um, statistical mechanics uh, says that for a monatomic gas, uh, C sub V is equal to 3 halves R star. And of course, C sub P is equal to C sub V plus R star. Um, so therefore, we're going to end up with C sub V is 5 halves of R star. And for a diatomic gas, like nitrogen or oxygen, uh, C sub V is equal to 5 halves R star and C sub P by extension would be 7 halves R star. Um, <clears throat> so those quantities are from statistical mechanics, and it follows that uh, you know, C sub P uh, divided by any molecular weight, um, in this case molecular weight for dry air, is equal to the um, specific heat for constant volume divided by the molecular weight, and the, specific, and the uh, universal gas constant divided by the molecular weight. Um, and if you do that transformation, you end up with this, which is C sub P for dry air is equal to C sub V for dry air plus R uh, sub D for dry air. So what that means is for these equations over here, for if you're dealing with dry air, you can just say eta is equal to C sub P D over C sub V D, and chi is going to be equal to R sub D over C sub P D, transforming these equations from the um, extensive form to the intensive form. And these equations uh, will simplify your life a lot if you need to calculate the temperature and volume relationship for an adiabatic process, or the temperature and pressure relationship for an adiabatic process, or the pressure and volume relationship for an adiabatic process.